Topping today's news, electrical workers appear to be threatening industrial action over the new BPL deal. The Attorney General debunks claims that the government did not consult widely on the cannabis bills and the delicious lobster season is just a few days away. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It is a pleasure to have you join us. In March of this year, when news first broke of the government's plans to outsource much of Bahamas power and lights operations to private companies, President of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union, Kyle Wilson, said members felt betrayed that the government would enter such an arrangement without consulting employees' unions and that the employees oppose the deal. Today, during a joint press conference with the Trade Union Congress, Mr. Wilson said the government has yet to meet with the employees to address their concerns and that the union is being treated with disregard. There appears to be an intentional effort to keep the Bahamas Electricity Workers Union and the Bahamian people in the dark as this BPL deal progresses. No one in authority is directly addressing the labor issues concerning this deal that will have a major impact on BPL and its operations. A deal that would split the operations of the company and place transmission and distribution assets along with unabated management rights to a third party hand. This deal appears to be top secret and classified and little to no information of the details is known to the union. When the minister responsible for energy was asked if she could elaborate on the future of workers at BPL as it relates to the deals with Bahamas Grid and Island Grid companies, she emphatically said no. Mr. Wilson said it is unfair to the employees at BPL and to the Bahamian people at large. He said since the announcement, the government has failed to communicate despite multiple attempts by the union. Over three weeks ago, I wrote to the minister citing concerns and requesting answers on behalf of workers at BPL and have yet to get any response whatsoever. There's a verbal assurance given to the union that there will be a general workers meeting this month, but nothing has yet to manifest. The word right sizing came up and it has spread like wildfire, causing much concern amongst the workers. Again, they claim no job losses and no benefits lost, but I have yet to see any documentation to satisfy the workers of such. Meanwhile, the Trade Union Congress and its affiliates, led by attorney Obi Ferguson, described the occasion as a very special day for the union and for Bahamas Power and Light. He pledged the TUC's support for the employees' union. BBL, as you know, is a very strong, dynamic group of workers in this country. So we're here today to give Carl and BPL workers assurance of the support necessary if and whenever they decide that they want that support. The Commonwealth of Bahamas Trade Union Congress is with this union and the leadership and the membership. So we are supporting them. So we will do what we have to do to support the president the officers and the members of BPL. The Trade Union Congress has taken this position despite signing a memorandum of understanding with the government while it was in opposition in August of 2021 to work together in the best interest of the Bahamian workers. The medical cannabis bills are one step closer to becoming law. Senators passed the collection of bills on Monday. The government has been criticized from various circles for not consulting widely enough before bringing those bills to Parliament. Attorney General Ryan Pinder shared several instances where amendments were made to the bills based on recommendations following consultation with various groups, including the local medical community that recommended changes to how visitors to the Bahamas access medical marijuana. We had extensive consultation with the medical community as well as pharmacy professionals and we made some amendments to the bills we had originally released for consultation based on their feedback. And those amendments are incorporated into what we debate today. For example, when it comes to visitors 
coming to the Bahamas who have a me medical ailment and possibly a medical card from their jurisdiction mm -hmm. that says that they have to have prescribed medical cannabis, mm -hmm. a medical doctor will have to issue that prescription. A medical doctor in the Bahamas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will have to issue that prescription, regardless if they have a medical card in their home jurisdiction. How it was originally crafted is we would have accepted the medical card and medical diagnosis of acceptable jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? We consulted with the medical community and they said, no, 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 well, this is in the Bahamas and we should be issuing the prescription. Mm -hmm. We accepted that and we made the change. We made the change. The Bahamas Pharmaceuticals Association has been one of the loudest groups complaining about a lack of consultation. However, the Attorney General shared the following in relation to the pharmacists. With respect to cannabis dispensaries, we made an amendment to require a licensed pharmacist to be affiliated with a cannabis dispensary. Before there was no affiliation, you would have a dispenser, properly trained and properly certified, allowed to dispense. The, medical com the pharmacy community said, well, we would feel more comfortable if a pharmacy, pharmacist, was related to the dispensary because ultimately they will bring that level of oversight. Mm -hmm. So we made that amendment, right? That amendment has been made. We also agreed after consultation with the Pharmacy Association to work in partnership with them, with the association, on the education and certify certification requirements for a cannabis dispenser. And so through that consultation, we made some adjustments and we're working together with the industry. As for the medical cannabis bills, the Governor General has to give her assent, and then they will be gazetted and become law. Although the Senate passed the collection of bills with the support of the opposition, some members raised concerns about provisions under the bills. FNM Senator Ruben Ramming led the charge in challenging the perceived value of the cannabis industry and offenses under the new laws. He says the government is overselling the potential for the cannabis industry here in the Bahamas. Right now, though, there are many who are actually thinking in terms of this, 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 this thing. We're going to soon and swiftly be that powerhouse that is going to take some of the international um, shares or market shares from the U.S. and from Canada. Well, Jamaica has been doing it um, much longer than us, and they had not they had not begun to have a that amount of impact, despite their culture being more steeped into the sacramental use of the drug. But I just want us to be cautioned that if a country with two odd plus million have to go through that growing pain, even us will have to go through that our market strain, our market forces, will determine a lot of things. And Senator Ramming adds that despite the good intent of the bills, there remains a need for stronger penalties and steeper fines. Consider, when we weigh out the cost-benefit analysis of the odds of one individual getting catch with one ounce of weed, right? The grass, from a business perspective on the streets, how, what's the cost benefit of the dude who may get a chance of getting catch with some weed, one ounce of weed, once every so often? Have you ever considered that this in itself now create another so-called quasi-legal business? Whereas, you know, because if I can go into business where I can make $1,000 a week and the fine is 200 a week. <laughs> Questioning the terms of religious use, Ramming, who is also a pastor, says the government is also bold in its move to legislate what is a religious sacrament. He says provisions protecting Rastafarians are a slippery slope, potentially setting a precedent for the misuse of other psychotropic drugs by religious groups. And finally, in this segment, the Department of Marine Resources is encouraging sustainable fishing practices ahead of the 2024 crawfish season. 
The department announced that crawfish season will officially open next week, Thursday, August 1st, and will run until March 31st, 2025. Assistant Fisheries Officer Irvana Moss details the regulations set to guide the season. Uh, crawfish is our number one fishery here in the Bahamas, and we want all of our fishermen to practice um, sustainable fishing measures as we go into the opening of the season. So harvestable tail has a five and a half inch length. Um, also wanted to remind the general public that they should always have a crawfish gauge if you are engaged in the crawfish um, fishery. Um, having tails that may have eggs or removing the eggs is also prohibited by law. So if you are caught with or suspected of, of course that will be investigated. If you are caught in contravention of the crawfish regulations, you will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Just last month, Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources Jomo Campbell revealed that tens of millions of dollars are lost each year to overfishing, poaching and other regulation violations. As a result, this season, amendments have been made to address those issues. You're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.